How do you pump down a unit? Today we're replacing the indoor coil and I want to pump down the refrigerant into the outdoor condenser. That way I can save the refrigerant. It's very easy when you pump down the refrigerant into the condenser, when you finish the indoor coil replacement, then you just open up the valves and then you release the refrigerant back into the system and then you don't have to recharge the system. You don't have to use a recovery tank. So today I'm gonna to show you, it's a very simple process. I'm gonna need this box ratchet here, a set of gauges, a drill to take the cover off. And then if your unit has a pressure switch, like a low pressure switch, we got a piece of wire so we can jump out that switch so it doesn't turn the equipment off whenever the equipment starts pumping down and that suction pressure goes down. Because what you're gonna see whenever we close the liquid line service valve with this box ratchet, this tool right here, this service valve wrench, we're gonna see that the equipment's gonna start pumping down that refrigerant because the refrigerant travels through the suction pipe from the indoor coil into this compressor in the condenser, okay? And then it can't get back out through the liquid line because we're gonna close that valve for our liquid line service valve. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this board here and we're gonna see where it says LPS. You see this, LPS? Now we're gonna get a piece of wire right here that I've got, okay? And it's already cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna push that wire in here. Okay, now we're gonna put that wire back in where it says LPS, and it's gonna try to come back out, but we're not gonna let it. Okay, now that we've got that done, we're gonna take and we are gonna put our red and yellow together. If you've got a contactor you can push in, you can just push in the contactor, okay? But we're gonna put our red and yellow together because that's just easier. Now, before you pump it down, you got your gauges hooked up. You see this low and high side, you can see we're reading pressure and it's equalized. We're gonna take this valve and we're gonna just close this liquid line service valve down. As you can see, to close this valve, we're going clockwise, okay? So like this right here. And you know when you've hit the bottom because, well, you're not gonna be able to turn it anymore, so. All right, see it's closed. And the refrigerant's gonna travel from the indoor coil in through our vapor line, into our compressor, out the discharge, into the manifold, into the condenser, out of the condenser through the liquid line, and then here it's gonna stop. So it's going to stop. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this right here, we're gonna put it in our suction line service valve, turn it up just a bit, that way we know it's, it's turnable, and then we're gonna prepare. As this pumps down, this pressure goes to zero. When it goes to zero, then we're gonna close, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Take our red and our yellow, and this is two-stage, so I'm gonna make sure I get this compressor into the second stage. All right. Now something you can also do is you can take your drill, okay? And I don't recommend this if you don't know when to stop, but you can take this right here, tighten it in your drill, and this makes it easier if you got enough room. Now I'm not gonna do that, because I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use it like this. Okay, now watch the gauge. Compressor's on, as long as we've got that low pressure switch jumped out properly, when it gets down to about 25, it's not gonna cut out, because it's not gonna open that pressure switch. But once it gets to zero, I'm gonna use this valve, I'm gonna shut my suction line service valve. Because we've already shut our liquid line service valve. And unless you shut the liquid line service valve, you're not going to be able to trap or pump that refrigerant down. So, look at it now. We're at 75, we're dropping. Look at that, it's dropping, man, dropping. So, once that gets to zero, and you can see this one, look. Both valves are, or both both gauges are registering a lower pressure. Now this is where it would cut off, about right here, 25. And it did not cut off, see that? So once it's at zero, you're gonna start hearing this clicking sound. It's gonna be pumping down. All right, zero. Right here. Remember to close this valve. We are clockwise. Counterclockwise, you'd be open to the valve.
All right, and that's it. What do you do now? Just take my plug off for my low voltage. Now turn the breaker off. That way the equipment doesn't come on and end up burning up a compressor. I've had brand new jobs where the technician forgot to open up the valves and they were closed and they never checked and it burned up the compressor. So make sure you, if you're going to close off these valves, suction line, liquid line service valve, make sure you turn the breaker off. Another thing is, is I have these thermostat wires. I can put them together. You may not have this capability. You may need to push the contactor in and hold it in until you can pump down and have the pressures at zero so you can close those valves. That can be dangerous, so be very careful and use some rubber gloves or find a different method. There are a couple different ways to do this, so this may not be the way you do it, but make sure that if you do have a pressure switch, that you know how to jump out the pressure switch and I'll show you that pressure switch. See, this is the wire I had and it says right here, LPS. Okay, so very good. And that's how that goes on. Okay, awesome. Now you know how to pump down the refrigerant into the condenser. If you're replacing an indoor coil, if you're replacing some of your line sets, this is an easy way for you to go ahead and save that refrigerant for when you get your install done, your replacement done. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.